Hi John, it's Ed from Ragtops and this is the 70 Challenger RT Hemi that we'd spoken about. Uh, Gary Guerin's car, I'm aware that you have already spoken with him this morning. He called me and said that you guys had a nice conversation and I'm sure he represented this car to you in a true manner. And he was the best man to do that since he owned it and knew every inch of it for almost uh, 12 years now. I hope you can fly down on Friday as we had talked and take a look at it. Uh, I believe that this will be your new car because it's absolutely spectacular. It's an original banana yellow car. It's an original Hemi car with a four speed and correct shaker hood. This is the real shaker, it's not a reproduction shaker. And it was a South Carolina car from day one. Zero rust, no body damage, and all of the original sheet metal and body panels and floor pans and trunk floor are in the car and intact. The car has been finished up, I believe, since late 87 or early 88 is what Gary had told me, and been driven 4,000 miles since the completion of the restoration. But the body and the interior and the chrome and the engine compartment and the trunk compartment are virtually flawless as is the undercarriage it does have small signs of driving as 4,000 miles will do the car features the 15 by 7 wide steel wheels with the Goodyear polyglass F60 15s features the pistol grip interior without the console door buzzer even works Features the round knob radio and the rally gauges on the dash, 37,337 miles. Features the collapsible steering column. And the door sticker with the production date, 8-1969. And the serial number car on the reads follows JS23R. 08B107384. The car is registered with the National Hemi Owners Association. I'll go under the hood of the vehicle now and show you the elephant engine. Going underneath the hood of the car, we find the opening for the shaker hood with the proper shaker sticker affixed underneath at the rear. And we find the shaker and the rubber shroud. We find the correct 26 inch wide radiator with the correct cap and the correct overflow hose and the correct upper radiator hose with the correct clamps. Find a very clean core support. Find very clean inner fender aprons. Find a nice grill and grill surround area. The correct Group 27 Mopar battery with the red caps, the correct crimped end cables, correct hole down. Find the correct washer bottle, the correct cap, all of the correct ribbed molded heater hoses with the Mopar insignias, and the correct clamps. Find the correct blower motor with the correct finish. The original valve covers for the Hemi. The correct plug wires for the Hemi, and the correct boots. Find the correct alternator, the correct power steering with the cooler, the correct Hemi exhaust manifolds, the power brake booster, and the correctly plated wiper motor.
find the tuning sticker affixed to the inner fender find nice clean fittings for the brakes and for the steering box and the steering components And here we find the fender tag, reading top to bottom, left to right, we have a 26 EN2, N41, N42, N85, N96 for the shaker, V6X, Y05, FY1, A34, A62, B51, C55, M21, FY1, H6, X9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, E74, D21, JS23, ROB107, 384. That is the only fender tag on the car. However, here in this area, it appears that there are some holes where another fender tag might have possibly gone. It does not look like, though, that this car has ever had another fender tag. This appears that this is the only fender tag the car has ever had. Uh, personally, I know the Cudas did have the Hemi fender tag affixed to them because the Cudas had to have special fenders. I was unaware that the Challenger had the same thing. The block in the car is the correct Hemi orange and very clean. There's no signs of grease or oil or any major dirt that's on the engine. The inner fender aprons are very clean. And the rear firewall area is also very clean. take you into the trunk of the car now. Going into the trunk of the car, we find a very clean underside with the jacking instructions affixed, the correct plating on the trunk latch, and the little rubber bumpers on each side of the trunk lid. Going inside, we find very clean inner wheel houses and the rear area behind the back seat. We find the correct inflated spare with the canister still intact and the correct plating on the gas filler tube. No rust repair or any accident repair has been done in here. Find the correct sound deadener on the insides of the quarter panels. And the correct jack and all the equipment with the right shades of gray on the springs and on the jack handle. Very clean tail light area. Very clean trunk latch area. And the correct style checked houndstooth mat in the floor. With a nice solid clean trunk floor underneath. Going into the passenger side of the car, again we find very clean door panels and interior on this side as well. Nice clean door jams. Now I'll show you the undercarriage of the vehicle. Okay John, I'm attempting to shoot the undercarriage as best I can for you. Showing you the resonator, the mufflers, the shocks, the gas tank. The rear axle housing for the Dana. And the inner quarters. And the backs of the floor pans in the rear, you see our body colored. Now I'll move to the front of the car and show you from the front back.
Here's the front suspension, John, showing the front subframe rails and the detail on the inner disc brakes and the front shocks and front suspension. The correct Mopar oil filter. Correct oil pin. And going back into the front floor pan and the rear of the front no, subframe area.